Hello, everyone. Welcome to Avaya's Healthy Aging Curriculum. I am Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you so much for being here. Our fellow teacher, Warren Phillips, is here today to talk about why detoxification is more important than nutrition for anti-aging. Love that topic. Warren is the co-founder of Revelation Health LLC, which is a a wellness company dedicated to answer the call of individuals searching for real solutions to their health challenges. Thanks so much for being here with us, Warren. Uh, anytime I have an opportunity to speak to people who need um, real information and hope, it's the honor is always mine. And I'm, I'm just honored to be here today um, speaking to everybody. Awesome. Thank you. So let's dive in talking about your story. I know you have a very interesting story and it has led to the work that you do today. So, so could you dive into that? Yeah, and even I even put a few slides together, um, you know, for you guys today. But you know, it, I'm just like many of you watching this. Like, I didn't start out as some you know major health advocate. You know, I was drinking Mountain Dew and um, working my nine to five job, just like uh, just like the rest of the world, until the bottom fell out, right? And uh, so I'll throw up a slide and kind of just like discuss what happened to me. And uh, it's a very interesting story. It's quite intriguing, and I. I, I I believe that um, you guys will see some value in, um, in sharing this with you. So you should see a slide of me um, currently right now. Do you see that? Um, we actually, I actually see one saying making disease optional. Um, yes. Warren oh, that's Phillips. you. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I got my master's degree. Um, I'm a background and um, I'm a geologist. I'm a master's degree in geologist with a focus on low temperature aqueous geochemistry. What's that? That is the chemistry in the, the living world, like water chemistry, soil chemistry. That was really my, my work growing up. And I'm a published, um, published author um, in journals and uh, meetings with the Montana Beer Minds and Geology. So I ran all over the world, um, well, actually all over the country mainly, um, in, in the Midwest and West, cleaning up abandoned mines for the U.S. Forest Service, Army Corps of Engineers, a lot of government jobs, U.S. EPA, uh, Montana uh, Bureau of Land Management. So I was running, cleaning up the world, thinking that I was making a difference. And I was um, in some respects. But in that process of cleaning up all this hazardous waste and heavy metals, and what you're seeing here in this slide is mercuric oxide. And this will be a fun little conversation um, what we can have about mercuric oxide and why they used it and how they used it. But in that process, I began to develop a lot of symptoms uh, that I think many of us, um, you know, deal with today, you know, unexplained weight gain, unexplained pain, which we call fibromyalgia today, chronic fatigue, uh, where you don't have any energy. So we label that one as well. Um, a lot of hormone dysregulation, um, you name it. And then chronic anxiety and uh, depression to the point where I had to quit my job, sell my home and move into the, in, into the basement with my parents, which was moldy. And that didn't work out so well either, <laughs> you know, living at the bottom of the hill. So my, my symptoms went from um, dysfunctional to um, almost, uh, you know, I have to say suicidal in, in some respects after going to over uh, 50 different doctor visits, 10 different practitioners with no answers, you know, with a chronic pain, and then doctors just handing me a med saying, um, here's effects or here's some pain pills. Most people are on two and three medications, you don't be on one, how long are you going to be on this? Really the rest of my life. These are the exact conversations I had. As a scientist, very upset about that outcome, 25 years old, hmm, yeah, this, isn't, this is where the suicidal thoughts come in. How can I function when I can't even walk outside and hear leaves rustle and my nervous system not be able to adapt to that, right? And then the psychological consequences, which you address in retraining my brain that I'm okay and I'm safe after being so sick. So there was a, there was a major journey, in, and I appreciate your work, Andy, uh, on the psychological side, because after you get well, you have to get well, it, um, especially in your mind. So there I am in this picture. To get back to this picture, that's mercuric oxide. They used to coat grain with this back um, in the 80s, right? And why would they coat grain with mercuric oxide? It's kind of a, might be a tough question, but do you have any idea why they would put mercuric oxide on grains? No, I really don't. <laughs> it doesn't sound like oh. a good idea. <laughs> well, it was a great idea from the standpoint that no bacteria or mold or even little animals will eat that stuff. So when you plant this grain into you know, wet environments, um, corn and wheat, it's still gonna sprout and grow and give you, you crop yields. But of course, just like asbestos and glyphosate now, kind of like a glyphosate of the day, 
right? They found out there's all kinds of consequences to putting mercuric oxide, knowing that mercury is like the second most toxic substance and a neurotoxin. So they eventually removed it from the, you know, putting it on grains. So they sold the grains. And if you look on my Facebook post here back in January 2009, this photo was taken in 2000, probably three. Um, but in 2000, uh, in, well, in this post in 2009, you can see that uh, they, they sold this grain, this coated grain overseas, and it caused all kinds of deformed humans and problems in third world countries. So just like we do in America, we sell our problems um, elsewhere. Um, when, you know, to gain a profit, right? So again, you know, a business decision, but a bad one. So in that process, I became very sick and ill. And I think, you know, we discussed that. And what I wanted to, to share and just really bring hope to everyone watching this today, the guy on the left, that's when I, that was the Christmas after I moved home, October, I think it was like October 30th, I come surprising my parents. They didn't even know when I was coming home exactly. And I surprised them. And that was Christmas um, when I was home. And I have a smile on there, Andy. And I think you understand this. But behind that smile was a really troubled, uh, you know, lost soul with no hope and completely um, wasted, not knowing um, that my dreams and hopes were removed from me, you know. And yeah, again, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, not sleeping, absolutely miserable. You can even kind of see my face was inflamed. And the reason I put that sexy picture of me on the right or your left, I don't know how it's going to show up. And I don't know how sexy it is, but I, I do have my shirt off. I'm trying to throw some humor in here. That's the day... I believe before I got married or just, or the day after, I mean, I don't want to, you know, I always want to be accurate, but I'm sure that was either, um, the, I'm pretty sure that's the day after um, I just got married. And that is the hope picture. That's the hope of the guy who found that detoxification was more important than nutrition, you know, for my life because it was, I was eating well, I was doing those things. I was, you know, going to the chiropractors, but it was detoxification that was the core of my healing that gave me a hope. Um, in a future, and that hope and future landed me the most amazing wife and two beautiful children. Um, one probably or two will interrupt um, at some point. They're four and eight now, and, and that's really the point of me being here and, and having the honor to share with you guys because I want to give you hope because a lot of the people are like the, the person um, on the left to have that fake smile you know, when they're playing with their children, that fake smile when they're with their grandchildren, that fake smile when they're at work. It's not a fun place to be, and if I can give you guys hope today and show you that you can reverse your, your, your health and your destiny, you know, from a, from a published scientist and chemist who got sick to a non-toxic advocate to practitioner educator. Like I got on fire for this information. And today we're going to, you know, bring some heat today and some really interesting and intriguing and a little bit shocking information on why detoxification is more important than nutrition for your anti-aging or longevity, your health, and even your microbiome, which is a, a really interesting topic when it comes to anti-aging. So I'm going to pass the ball back to you, uh, Andy, and uh, you know, yeah, see how you. that landed. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for sharing, and, and what a story. My first thought when I saw the original picture was, did that suit not protect you? <laughs> yeah, that's called personal protective equipment, PPE. <laughs> and it, it did um, help you with acute exposure. But there is no, uh, there's no complete protection for personal protective equipment. Air still gets through those masks, um, you know. And a lot of the times, as a manager on the project, not only did I do the cleanup, but I'd wind up running the equipment. My dad has an excavating, um, you know, company in the background, so we had a small business. My dad did it all by himself, so I wound up digging up hazardous waste because it was less expensive to pay me than it was to hire <laughs> operators. So I, I got dust and dirt, and I crawled all over these abandoned mines. And I would picnic on these things. I mean, when just imagine like um, an area where nothing lives or grows. And these are these old abandoned mines that I would um, actually look at. And they would be great um, places for people to ride their motorcycles or picnic. And they'd climb up in these mountains. We look up at this beautiful, essentially old tailings pond that got filled with dirt full of arsenic and lead and mercury. And the reason we would go and clean these areas up is for the, maybe the 21 people that would visit that area over a course of a year. But what I found, and the kind of the point of this, is in our everyday world, you know, 21 people are getting exposed to that abandoned mine. And I'd spend the government's money, millions of dollars, digging that stuff out. Again, cleaning up the environment, great. But in our own homes, in our own mouths, in our own you know, uh, cleaning products, we are toxifying ourselves to the hilt with flame retardants, you know, these same chemicals, mercury, lead, you name it, in our everyday lives. 
and no one's sounding alarm on that and no one's cleaning up that and changing that, but we're spending millions of dollars, you know, cleaning up the environment, which I agree with, but what about us? You know, what about you? What about you guys watching? I think that you're a little more important, um, you know, so that you can have the energy and health to make that impact in the world. So like for people watching right now, obviously they're coming to this event for anti-aging, for he healthy aging, reversing aging, you know, all sorts of things. So whether they have chronic pain or fibromyalgia or chronic illness now, or they just want to prevent it for the future, like what, how does detoxing help people live a healthier life, slow the aging process, all of that kind of stuff? Yeah, let's make that connection right now. And it's a very easy one. Um, toxins, and we could, I could throw up a cell right now when I just do that, just to make it clear for everyone. Um, toxins, you know, they're, they're, they're horrible things, right? And I don't, I don't know if you can see, uh, does my uh, mouse come up on here? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But uh, so they, they, uh, they come in to a cell, right? And you are the makeup of your cells. I'm gonna take this screen off for a second. Um, you see them back to me? Yeah, we're still on you. We haven't gone. Oh, okay, I, I put up the screen and didn't share it. So okay. let's talk about this before I throw up the cell because I, if I'm not seeing your eyes and if I don't yeah. feel like I'm seeing the audience, it, it's <laughs> kind of weird for me talking to a slide. Yeah. So uh, toxins, uh, they're the ultimate aging, ager. Why? It's because they go in and affect your cells, your mitochondria, your energy, um, and that, and, and your DNA and RNA and how you express disease and how you ex and your telomere length and everything that comes with aging, toxins come in and anti-age very fast, right? Mercury is uh, a major pro-inflammatory. It inflames everything. Inflammation uh, is anti-aging. You know, you get inflamed, your joint pain, your pain. You want to live a life that reverses aging. If you remove toxins from your life, it's the ultimate anti-aging secret, right? You could be eating all the healthy fats in the world, which is great. Um, you can detoxification protocols like Dr. Pompa trains. I know that he's a, a speaker on here. Those fasting protocols kill off those bad cells but, and, and cause autophagy. But those toxins still get re-released inside of your body and you need to get those out. So anything in our toxic buckets, I mean, we're getting this from birth. And it's, it's scary. The EWG report talking about all these chemicals, cancer-causing cancer chemicals, right? So the ultimate anti-aging secret in my belief is detoxification needs to be part of everyone's anti-aging routine because it, it's foundational. When I say anti, that detoxification is more important than nutrition um, for anti-aging, this is why I mean it. If your cells aren't healthy, right? If they're, you have an inflamed cell membrane, let me share my screen. If you have an, uh, are you seeing it? Not yet. Okay. Oh, Should there be we seeing go. it now. Yep, okay. we got it. So everything happens at the cell. You know, life and death happens at the cell membrane. And when these toxins come in, they literally, that two little layers of red, that's a lipid bilayer. That's two layers of fat around every cell made up of um, omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, kind of like the building blocks, building blocks in four to one. That's why eating grass-fed meat is important for anti-aging or eating uh, or taking, if you're a vegetarian, taking supplements that have four to one ratio of fats because you literally want to rebuild these cell membranes. And a cell membrane that's healthy lets good things in and bad things out, right? And that little ATP starburst there in the middle, that is where your, that's your mitochondria, if you will. That's where the, where the magic happens, produce energy. You need energy to detoxify your body. You need energy to... Um, breathe, act, your heart to pump, right? So when this cell membrane is intact and doing what it's supposed to do, it's functioning well and you're anti-aging, you're living longer. But when these toxins come in, they'll affect and trigger your DNA, right? And they can trigger autoimmune as we'll see in some of the research. They can come in and cause mitochondrial dysfunction and mitochondrial membrane damage, which slows your production of ATP and your bodily functions to detoxify. So the whole, your whole life kind of spirals down like mine did when I had these toxins that were coming in on my uh, trillion cells and literally stopping that cell function. And then the second issue with toxins, um, and not to make light of it, is that they're hormone mimics. They'll come in and attach to these little hair-like features on your cell membranes that are gatekeepers that allow hormones to tell your DNA and your cells what to do, right? And then they also blunt those receptors and disallow your hormone function to work properly. And that's why brain detoxification is so critical because your hypothalamus pituitary, the control towers in your brain that tell all your downstream organs what to do, your, you know, your ovaries, your 
uh, liver, your kidney, your thyroid, when that gets disrupted, the control tower of your whole life falls apart. So talk about anti-aging. There's nothing, in my opinion, and again, foundational issue, I tried everything. It was detoxification that slowly and systematically, it's not a one day, it's not a seven day cleanse, 30 day cleanse, 60 day cleanse. Um, in my opinion, it's 90 days just to get started to get these things moved out safely and effectively. And then your cells start functioning better, better cellular function, better anti-aging, better life. Mm, excellent. So I'll stop sharing for a second. Mm -hmm. So like what, what's the process? I mean, obviously I'm sure that's the, the, the question everyone has in the world of, of how do they get this stuff out of their body? What, what kind of steps do you take? I know we're going to talk about cytodetox at some point, um, but what do, what do people do? Yeah, I mean, from a, from a, you know, a, a high level, right? You want to reduce your exposure to these toxins, right? And I'd love to show some of the slides just to drive home how important that is. Some healthy, um, some healthy fear, not, not um, you know, fear like, oh my gosh, uh, my body can't handle this stuff. But the toxic load is pretty significant today. So our number one, um, we teach our doctors to remove the source of toxicity in your life. So if you're looking at, uh, you know, looking at your life, and there, there's some great, uh, I'll give you some do-it-yourself um, ways of doing things, right? If you look at your, all your bedding and your couches, um, things that, are, that can potentially cause fire and damage, your kids' pajamas, especially if they're you know, loose fitting, um, they're loaded with flame retardants. Um, a, a recent study by National Geographic showed that there's so many flame retardants in this individual's blood that it's higher than somebody that actually works in a factory that makes these chemicals because you're getting exposed to them when you fly in a plane. They slather that whole plane with flame retardants by law. And they're not telling you that that's getting into your blood can trigger all kinds of disease and autoimmune and you're, you're loaded with them. So you need to be aware. You can't avoid toxins, but you can start taking steps to remove those toxins. So what I do is like, you know what? How do I remove the, this? The, I'm, a, I'm a little bit of a minor biohacker, so I'm buying this bedding that keeps me cooler at night, right? I won't name the brand because there's several out there. Um, but I soaked it in 50% vinegar, 50% water, so that I could use the chemical reaction to break down those flame retardants and remove them right? Soaked it for 24 hours, then washed it several times. So there's ways to remove the source from your life, right? So, uh, you know, using vinegar, not only to, to soak your flame retardants or, you know, to clean your couch and pull off the couch covers and, and clean all that stuff to remove that load, especially your children, because they're not as big and as robust. They can't handle that toxic load like you can as an adult, but you've built it up for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. So you really have to do that. So some of the other things, you want to switch out the cleaners that you're using, the, your personal care products, the things that go on your skin, your greatest organ, right? All those things. You got to clean up your air. You know, do it. You can even do a, for example, say you live in the country, right? And you have a brand new home. If I measured the VOCs in your brand new home, it would exceed EPA guidelines, right? It would totally, you shouldn't even be allowed to live in that environment, but they allow it, right? It just is what it is. It isn't regulated. But what you can do, you can get rid of 75% of those toxins. You live in a, you know, in a nice, clean environment. The outdoor air quality is way cleaner than indoor air quality. I forget the, the actual statistic by the EPA, but it's uh, you know, seven, 10 times cleaner outside than it is in, inside. So you open a window, put a fan in there, and the solution to pollution is dilution. Dilute that air with fresh air and knock down all those VOCs. You know why you're not sleeping at night? You just put brand new carpet in your room and you're running to the doctor and you have, you have chronic headaches and chronic fatigue and you're not sleeping, but it's these VOCs that are disrupting your hormones and messing up your, you know, your, your sleep cycle, your melatonin, your serotonin, your pituitary, right? So there's, there's always a cause to stuff. So remove the causes as best you can in your life. Do some research, watch these summits, watch other summits and trainings like this and really remove those things from your life. We have the toxic top 10 I think we even still have that old website out there, the toxic top 10, but mm -hmm. you know, there's all kinds of ways to reduce um, these toxins in your life. Obviously the foods that you eat, right? Eat organic and those top 10 toxic things like strawberries and, you know, really choose, you know, non-pesticide, you know, sprayed GMOs, glyphosate, those sorts of things that are really disrupting your gut, your microbiome and your health. So remove the source. That would be something that everybody can do watching this today to, uh, to slow down the aging process from toxins. Got it.
Thank you. I appreciate all those really, you know, simple things that people can start doing. And I had no idea that if you soaked, soaked stuff in vinegar and water that you're, yeah, you're doing whatever chemical reaction needs to happen in order to decrease those, the flame retardants. I didn't realize that at all. That's, that's awesome. And there's the lots of do it yourself tricks. I mean, you can make your own air filters if you want, like buy a box fan and then get a Merv 11 filter and, you know, tape it to the back and knock down your particle count in your home. Right. Um, dehumidification is key for mold, right? Keep your house below 50% humidity. Buy a, a good dehumidifier you can buy them from Costco now. Um, keep your humidity down because um, uh, mold, it's not the mold that makes you sick, it's the biotoxins they produce. So if you lower your humidity below 50%, that mold isn't thriving anymore, right? Always fix your water leaks, things like that, but that mold isn't thriving anymore. And so it's not having that biological warfare that causes these biotoxins to get into your air quality. And they're highly, highly, inflammatory to the cell membrane and, and hormone disruptive. So mold is a killer and uh, lowering your home uh, count. So when you open that window, you got to regulate that humidity at the same time, right? So, and there's all kinds of, you know, for those that can afford it, you can buy uh, all kinds of uh, air exchangers today, dehumidifiers in line. But again, um, I'm, all, I'm about uh, providing solutions that everybody can do. Mm, I love it. So like, I'd love to talk about detox as it relates to <clears throat> different things as, you know, a lot of people deal with things like fatigue or weight gain or, you know, obviously chronic illness and stuff as they get older. So how does detoxing help with all of these kind of areas of life? That a lot yeah, Let's look at some of the, the research to say that it's just not, again, I don't want folks to think that, you know, this is, you know, some uh, you know, a summit or a training to, it's about giving hope. And the greatest way to give people hope is to educate them on the realities of what we're dealing with. And the research is very clear that toxicity is something not to be um, looked at lightly. And, uh, and I'll share some of that data with you. As shocking as it may be, I think it's really important, um, you know, for everyone to see that. So you should be seeing yeah. my slide. Yeah, um, right now. And, sure. I, and I'm sure, have you interviewed anyone on the gut microbiome and anti-aging? Did that, did that come up? Yeah, we've talked about healthy gut um, several times in, in different interviews for sure and, and how important obviously that is. Yeah, for your genetic expression, right? Anti-aging, turning on the good genes and the bad, right? Um, if you don't have certain bacteria, um, we'll, we'll kind of get into it. But here's, here's a, you know, a prestigious journal. 2016 and there's all kinds of this information out there now. I mean, there's new new research showing that your microbiome as a predictor to disease is even more pre more predictable about disease looking at your microbiome, your signature than DNA itself, your DNA weaknesses because it's these bacteria that interact with your genes that turn these bad genes on and off. So your bacteria, your microbiome is a better predictor of disease and there's a new research out there. I just saw it um, from one of my friends, and I actually had it. Uh, I wish I would have pulled it up for you, but look at this. There's clear evidence that bacteria-dependent metabolism of pollutants modulates the toxicity for the host. So, um, and the, the converse of that, and this is the point, environmental contaminants from various chemical families, various chemical families have been shown to alter the composition and or the metabolic activity of your gut bacteria. So what's this saying in a nutshell is that these toxins are affecting not only the, the various chemicals, we're talking mercury, we're talking lead, we're talking glyphosate for sure. It really, that, and that's one of the biggest issues um, that it has because it's killing off and destroying your microbiome. It's affecting the metabolism, so the health of that bacteria, how well it's functioning, right? And that's really important. A healthy bacteria, the right bacteria, is the symbiotic relationship in your body, it is the expression of who you are and the expression of your health. And the contaminants, are affecting how healthy these bugs are, their gastrointestinal activity, and, their, and it's shaping and killing off your microbiotype. And as I said, when those toxins affect and you're wiping out some of these good bacteria, now you can't deregulate an autoimmune um, gene. You can't uh, activate um, your weight loss gene, if you will. And so it, it's, it's crystal clear. I don't think I have the slide, but there, um, it says it at the bottom of this, but th there's a body of evidence suggesting, um, the very last sentence here, there's a body of evidence suggesting that the gut mi microbiota are a major plate, are a major plate or yet underestimated element that must be considered to fully evaluate the toxicity of environmental contaminants. So the recent body of research is showing healthy microbiome, healthy person. 
-hmm. If you have a weight loss issue, weight, weight loss resistant, you're missing this bacteria. All of these people are missing this bacteria, right? You have an autoimmune condition, you're missing this bacteria. That's why fecal microbiome transplants are still active and alive today. Removal of C. diff, autoimmune, colitis, right? They're missing these bacteria that downregulate inflammation in the gut. Anti-aging, part of anti-aging is also disease and disease reversal. So this is, this is how important this is. And toxins are a major player. Um, and you know we're, we're doing all the diets for your microbiome and all these other things. But what about the things that, that you, if you have a mouthful of mercury amalgam fillings, right? right? If I measured, you take a cup of hot coffee and I stick a meter, and I've done this. I, on my old, I could buy mercury meters, arsenic meters, um, lead guns on my, you know, my previous life. And if I took a, a, a mercury meter, which would suck the air in, look at the wavelength of light after it burns that up inside of the little detector, I could look at the wavelength of light and predict how much mercury is in your mouth. It's going to be like a cup of coffee. It's like 700 times. I don't know the exact number. I might be exaggerating, but it's at least 10 times higher than the EPA air quality um, would allow someone to breathe. And every time you're drinking hot coffee, chewing, you're exposing yourself to hazardous air in your own mouth that exceeds EPA standards by an order of magnitude, but it's okay. So what does mercury do? Going back to the, the grain example, what does mercury do? It kills what? Everything. So when that drips down into your mouth microbiome and it's killing off your mouth bacteria, causing tooth decay and all your bacteria in your mouth is so important. That's vaporizing up into your brain, causing hypothalamus pituitary hormone dysregulation. You're ingesting it down into your gut, killing off healthy bacteria, right? And everyone says, oh, you're just full of candida. You're just full of parasites. The immune system response, which is the, the next slide that I'll share with you from toxicity, man, your immune system, we start detoxing people, they pass parasites because you're actually, your body starts doing the way um, it should. So it's not about throwing band-aids. Detoxification is more important than nutrition for anti-aging because when you start removing this stuff, your body starts doing what it's supposed to do. It's a powerful, highly adaptive system. So anyway. Yeah. Hey, quick question about like the, like the mercury fillings and stuff in your mouth. Like, so, and I don't know much about this, so forgive my ignorance, but like when I was, I don't know, maybe my late teens, early twenties, I went to the dentist and they basically, from my memory, they took out all the silver fillings and replaced them with something else. Is that actually getting rid of like what is dangerous or is that just covering over something or do you know how that, how that process works? Well, mercury amalgam removal is definitely something you want to do um, uh, correctly, not quickly. So you can do it quickly and run to your dentist till, you know, most of them, you know, will do it now, right? It's been outlawed in all of our countries. Kids can't get them anymore. So they'll kind of do it for you, but doing it improperly can make you very sick. And we have lots and lots of clients um, and, and individuals that get super sick from doing it quickly versus correctly. Mm -hmm. So you want to go to a dentist that knows what he's doing. You want to prepare the body correctly. We have a, a preparatory phase um, product that we have called the prep phase and we can maybe share that in there that you can do beforehand because you want to prepare your detoxification pathways you want to take a whole bunch of carbon to bind it you want to do as much as you can and you want to use a a doctor that's trained not only to keep himself safe but to right. keep you safe and it's very important because that doctor working and drilling vaporizing the mercury right so back going back to my hazardous waste cleanup days i didn't believe this to be true i'm like how could the government put a mercury amalgam fillings in my mouth and it have all this mercury. You doctors are crazy. There's no way the government would do that to me, right? This is the unawake version of Warren, right? The yes. one that's plugged into the matrix. So there's no way I, I get angry at people. Like, and I'm still not very politically, you know, politically minded. And I'm not, I'm also not conspiracy. I'm results and data, right? Like what's, what's the real deal going on here? What, where's the truth lie? And I, I investigated this and, you know, it took me to, again, back to my laboratory days. I, I called up, um, the lab that I was working with in Idaho. And they, I'm like, is there any way, you know, like, have you ever tested this stuff? He's like, well, yeah, you know, we, we, um, the dental office on the federal aviation administration site in Spokane, Washington at the air base. Yeah. There's a dentist there and we monitor his waste stream. It's loaded with mercury. Um, it has to be captured and cleaned. Um, and then we do a toxicity characterization leaching procedure on all his spent amalgam fillings. So, um, it's cradle to grade class three hazardous waste. And that, that's just the amalgams that pop out. It's like, yeah, it's cradle to grave. That's go to a special place. 
special landfill, you know, special protection. Um, there's all kinds of rules and regulations before the amalgam comes in, after it leaves his office. Um, and what's a toxicity characterization procedure look like? Like how much lead, like how much, you know, mercury is loaded with mercury. And toxicity characterization leaching procedure is essentially they, you take it, um, you use a very weak acid, you kind of mimic the gut, the, the gut and mouth, you know, um, exposure, and they shake it up and they measure the amount of mercury, loaded with mercury, right? And now there's all kinds of evidence showing that. So I didn't believe it at first either, right? And, 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 and dentists, and you understand human psychology, when you have to admit that you're literally hurting and killing people, it's really hard for someone to admit that because their whole neurological psyche can be damaged when you have to believe you're hurting someone. Because doctors, medical doctors, dentists, whoever you are, their intent is never to hurt somebody. They took an oath, first do no harm. So when they're faced with this information, it's really hard for them to believe because it's literally breaking down their own psychology and their own belief system. And the dentists that, that do come to that place, they weep and they cry and they break down and they usually transforms their life. They take that energy of negativity and then they go out into the world and join organizations where I would lead you to go IAOMT.org. IAOMT.org. It's International Academy of Oral Medicine um, where they, they teach these bioidentical, uh, bi these safe amalgam removals, root canals. You know, a lot of disease starts in the mouth. So that being said, right, that's a lot of information. It's very important. But if you want a healthy anti-age, Prepare your body. Go to a, a really good, uh, you know, um, this is a source removal, R number one, you know, that Dr. Pompa teaches, right? Mm -hmm. Remove that source of mercury. You, that is a great anti-aging strategy that you need to do if you can, if you can do it, right? And don't do it quickly. Don't go to any dentist. Do it safely. Vet your dentist heavily. I want to see your protocol, right? Don't just believe them because they're even on the IAOMT.org website. How long have you been doing? How many years? What is your procedure? What do you do for me? Do you have an air filter? Do you, like all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? You really need to know because it's a big deal. You could literally change the course of your life for the better or for the worst if done improperly. Mm, thank you. I appreciate that because I'm sure a lot, a lot of people watching or listening right now have either not gone through that process, want to go through that process, obviously you know, need to have the right information to do it in a, in a safe way. Um, do you want, are there other slides you want to dive into as we carry yeah, I'll, on? I'll, I'm going to rip through just a, a couple um, slides just to, and then, you know, we'll wrap up and talk about some other solutions for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'd like to educate um, on a few other things, right? Just to, to throw out some really good information. When you, people are suffering with stuff, why am I sick? You know, that used to be the whole thing. Why me? Why am I sick? What's the cause? And when you get to the cause, it gives you hope because you know what you're fighting now, right? When I was sick, I didn't know, right? I didn't have a disease with a known cause, right? And so it took me all this time to figure out it was toxins. And so I believe when you remove the, the, remove the cause, the body will heal itself. So look at this stat, autoimmune disease. Currently studies have shown that genetic predisposition for approximately 30% of all autoimmune disease, the rest, 70% are due to environmental factors, mm -hmm. including toxic chemicals, dietary components, gut dysbiosis, and infections. And if you look at the previous slide that you didn't see, there's a huge, toxins are massive immunosuppressors, right? Can cause all kinds of immune suppression. So that would talk to the you know, infections, because infections, viruses that you can't fight off can definitely trigger autoimmune. Gut dysbiosis, go back to this slide, right? What causes gut dysbiosis? Well, the food you eat, you know, the, the pesticides and chemicals that you're eating, and herbicides going into your body, destroying your microbiome. But also, as we noticed, you know, that's one of the various chemical families. But if you have a mouthful of mercury amalgam fillings, it's crushing your gut, gut microbiome. So, of course, that 70% is going to be, a, you know, um, linked to gut dysbiosis. And what gut dysbiosis means, it means your bacteria are all thrown off, right? You have a in one of the words out there today is small bacterial, you know, overgrowth. That's SIBO, right? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. What is the cause of SIBO? Well, you can do these anti-SIBO diets, do all this stuff. But if you have toxins, you know, wreaking havoc, it's, it's messing with your immune system and causing. It's the root cause, right? We have to go upstream to these causes. And so toxins and disease. Toxins um, is linked to the, you know, the obesity endemic. Is there a relationship? You know, right here it says, 
Recent cumulative evidence suggests that obesity may represent an adverse health consequence of exposure during the critical development window to environmental uh, chemicals disrupting what? Endocrine function, right? They are endocrine hormone disruptors. Moreover, exposure to these chemicals can play a key role in developing about obesity-related metab metabolic and cardiovascular disease. So when I say detoxification is more important than nutrition for anti-aging, I mean it. Like, I really do. There's a huge link to this stuff, and it's being glossed over. And then I will swing at the fence right now with you guys. We're, we're swinging at the fence and talking about Rome, right? What, Andy, what, what, what took Rome out? Do you remember this story? Oh, God. Not, no, no, not the history expert. Tell me. <laughs> well, neither am I, and I wouldn't know it if it wasn't for the lead. They had these lead... Uh, if you look, look back to, this is the most powerful, Rome, watch, watch Netflix, right? They, they, they dominated everything. What took them out? Was it their power? Was it their government? It was their brains. It was their dysfunction because of lead poisoning. They're, they didn't know about lead poisoning. They lined their aqueducts with it. They put it inside the lining of, of their wine, and it literally drove them batty, and it killed off that nation. That is the what his, his history believes to be true i believe it to be true and look what it does to places like flint michigan and it's really funny that where i'm from pittsburgh we have higher lead than flint you know flint was a political hot spot but you look at california you look at all over the world this lead issue is crazy and it's not just you know uh, you know flint michigan right it's not just rome it's happening today and why is that scary Right, and here's some of the, the the research in here. I just added these links, but there's a there's a study published that women between the ages of 65 and 87 with high lead levels were nearly 60 percent more likely to die during the study. Right, talk about anti-aging. Lead increases your ability to die. That's great. So if you get this stuff out properly and are aware of it, and not only does it you know cause heart disease, blood, lead, you know high blood pressure, all these other things, it's really really important to realize. If you remove the cause of the aging, of the dis-ease potential, you can reverse your, anti you can anti-age, which is really powerful. And if you're from the 80s, you have the mercury amalgam fillings, you had the context uh, lens solution right in your eyes through the 80s. Thimerosal free, great marketing. Why? Because thimerosal is mercury. It's what they put in vaccines. Not an anti, you know, we're not going anti-vax here, but I'm anti-mercury. You know, I mean, this stuff causes problems. It's when you get injected, you know, a little baby, that's more, more, more mercury, depending if you do the MMR or whatever, that's more mercury than an elephant is allowed to have, according to the EPA, right? So, uh, and people can justify whatever. I'm just telling you the truth. It's too much mercury for the body to handle. It causes problems. We're part of the mercury generation. There's the amalgam fillings. Um, talking about the, the more amalgam fillings you have in your mouth, the more you're going to find um, in, your, in, your, in your organs, your tissues, your brain, your kidneys, heart, and liver. Um, and then mercury is a major cause of dementia. Children today are getting dementia in their 40s. Talk about aging more quickly. If you want to look at some of the science on the, the neurology, here's an old um, study done out of uh, the University of Calgary. You can look this up, how mercury causes brain neuron degeneration and damage. Check that out on YouTube. That'll wake you up. This stuff, especially if you have amalgams in your mouth, um, and then, you know, there's lots of symptoms of, 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 of these things. One of the ones that I would, you know, want to relate to you guys is I had abnormal shyness. Um, I had, you know, and it was embarrassing being sick. People would make fun of me. Like, when's the last time you went bathroom warm? Because my gut microbiome was destroyed. I had a distended gut, right? I couldn't go to the bathroom. My breath stunk. I had the, people made fun of me. Oh, Warren has the eight foot dragon today. That means my breath had eight feet of, you don't want to be with eight feet of me, mm. right? Cause I stunk so bad. My room stunk and it, like I'd cold hands and feet cause of thyroid. I couldn't, I couldn't take a hot shower cause it would cause temperature dysregulation. My body couldn't adapt to the heat. I couldn't do a hot tub. I couldn't watch a movie because I couldn't adapt to the stress of an action film, right? Crazy, unexplainable illnesses, unexplained an anger, you know, dizziness, getting up. My, my adrenals couldn't adapt to, to standing up all that stuff. And then now there's a new problem, glyphosate, how it's linked to dementia. Dr. Stephanie Seneff, look her up, Dr. MIT, all these studies, guys, glyphosate. Oh, we were sounding alarm on this, you know, 15 years ago, right? But Oh, but guess what? 
it was okay, it was a safe, so safe that you could drink this stuff. Oh, now class action lawsuit, right? Um, thank God there's alternatives, um, ammoniated soaps for killing your, you know, your, your, your weeds outside that are safe. You don't wanna breathe it, but it's not toxic and destroys you and causes cancer. But now all the radio stations and ads and signs showing you know, class action lawsuit. But unfortunately, when you can't avoid toxins, this stuff, just like DDT, is now ubiquitous in our water supply and soils and even non-sprayed grains. The EPA is showing that there's you know, high levels of this stuff showing up in our, in our foods at levels that exceed the EPA guidelines and not even sprayed with glyphosate. It just got into our water and soils because it doesn't degrade that well. Mm -hmm. Last slide that I'll talk about is what toxins do in a nutshell, how they age you. To wrap this up, and we'll talk about some of the solutions, Imagine your little cells are, you know, little buckets, right? And these trillion bucks, buckets can handle so much of an insult, right? They can handle a little bit of toxins here, a little bit there. Your body produces its own ha hazardous waste, if you will. And you use methylation to, to grab on and methylate and neutralize that toxin. You use glutathione to detoxify that out of your body. Different areas, different ways. The science is complicated, but your body has great processes for that. But with today's onslaught, right, and how we're doing life, it's just unavoidable. And you get so much toxins. And then we talk about trauma, which you understand is a toxin to your body, producing negative hormones and negative thoughts. That fills your bucket. That drives your internal toxins in there. And then also infections drive toxins. And today, when you get all these things working together and toxins being at the top of, of this list, that we're talking about today, your bucket overflows and inflammation and dis-ease happens. This is where you get a lot of the symptoms that you're seeing along here can be related to, to toxicity. And we talked about your cells and how that happens, right? So this is why I'm bringing this message today. If you want to anti-age, you got to anti-toxin. You need <laughs> which is called detoxification. So, um, and I think that's, you know, the, the bulk of my slides. I mean, I have a few others and we can talk about some, you know, the Cyto Detox product and that's our yeah. passion project um, as well. Yeah, I'd love to go into that because obviously for people watching, we've gotten a, a ton of information and as far as like, right, why this stuff is so bad for us and how it's creating, you know, faster aging and chronic disease and all that stuff. So, so yeah, what is Cyto Detox? How do people um, start using it? And we do have buttons and links below that links over to your site, which has all this information, but, but tell us about it. Well, Cyto Detox was a, a, a passion project of our organization. Um, we've been detoxifying people. Th this is a heartbeat, as you can tell, like we're super passionate about, everyone has their niche, right? Psychology, I believe is just as important, right? Um, in, in detoxifying your life. If you don't have a strong psychology, you don't even have the strength to try something new. You're living in so much fear. But sometimes you have to detox a little bit so your hormones come back online. So, that you, so there's this, this beautiful mm -hmm. dance between psychology and detoxification that I love. I think they're, they're very well married and, and go hand in hand and they help each other work, right? So detoxification has been our niche for a while, um, over 15 years. Um, it's been our niche um, in training practitioners across the country. We have programs, certification programs um, in this area. And we even um, educate and certify, you know, um, health, health coaches and influencers that, that want this information. So it's a big deal. So we were using, uh, you know, a prescription based chelators and some of them you can get over the counter like DMSA, um, prescriptions like DMPS, um, and then obviously glutathione, um, and not all glutathione are created correctly. You want to create intracellular glutathione, not just take a glutathione product and cause symptoms and issues. So we were developing these protocols. And then, um, like all good things um, in psychology happens, the, some of your protocols get taken away because of regulation, right? So we were left and faced with uh, a major challenge in our protocols and in, in helping people get well because we lost our over-the-counter chelator, DMSA, which will grab mercury and lead pretty well. And then we also knew about zeolites because zeolites have been very popularized by um, multi-level marketing companies and, you know, various practitioners using these zeolites. But in our process of trying to actually show results, showing real data that these things are working, we could find none. And in our testing of these supplements, what we found, and I'll even throw up a slide um, to show you this, is that we found a lot of these things were actually contaminated with heavy metals, yeah. um, exceeding... Uh, 
you're probably not seeing us. Not I yet, didn't slide no. share. Let me share now. Exceeding yep. even Prop 65 warnings, right? Um, and the, these are just some of the ones, and I'm not saying they work or they don't work. I'm just saying, look at the amount of, of um, you know, we're just looking at lead, but some of them arsenic and mercury. So how zeolites work and why we landed there is that, man, these zeolites, you know, you know, they're contaminated, right? But they do have a great principle. I use this in my, you know, old uh, chemistry. It's a very basic uh, chemistry equation. So really, this slides to show you that all these things, most of these products are violating uh, Prop 65. They have greater than eight parts per million um, lead in them. Some of them are 27.6 times more, and there's no warning label on them. So that's another disruptive topic of mine is really holding... Uh, CGMP is very subjective. Good manufacturing practice, is, it's a subjective result. There's no definitive um, you know, guideline, except for Prop 65 does give you some of that. So I was disenchanted by um, zeolites as an option, yet I understood that cat ion exchange, ion exchange, is a very, very powerful way to bind heavy metals because uh, for two reasons. One, it's a very strong permanent bond. Um, and these zeolites have this honeycomb-like structure and create these essentially tubes and connection in this, in these uh, little, you know, little spaces that sit inside of the zeolite structure because there's these negative oxygen bonds around aluminum and silica. It's aluminum silicate structure, aluminum, silica, and oxygen mainly, and there's sodium and potassium that sit inside of these cages. Um, and the reason they do, because they're like a magnet, right? They want a positive charge and there's a slight negative charge multiple negative charges from these oxygens that have this minus one charge, four of them actually, SiO4. So there's these Si, um, Si4, there's more silica in a, uh, in a zeolite, um, aluminum silicate mineral. What is aluminum silicate mineral? Clays are aluminum silicate minerals. Um, zeolites are a crystal made from volcanic ash hitting salt water, and they, and they under temperature and pressure, create these, these crystals that have these amazing um, ion exchange, these little magnets that love to bind heavy metals. That's why they're so stinking contaminated. So we're like, we can't give someone something that has contaminants in it to exchange out, or is this really completely bound? You don't know. So one of the, the things that we love the technology of a very simple chemical reaction, it's going to exchange something lighter, like a sodium or um, a calcium for something heavier, like a heavy metal, lead, mercury. Does that make sense? And it'll exchange that light heavy metal out with something heavier. And it loves that. It does it because of the, the change, the ion exchange capacity. And these ion exchange capacities are these leads and mercuries, and they use it in wastewater cleanup. They use it in um, Fukushima, because uranium's very heavy. You don't get any heavier than that. And they bind that, they put the zeolites out there, and they don't care if it's full of lead or whatever. They, zeolites are everywhere, but they're all contaminated with lead and mercury and arsenic and even uranium because what does it do in the environment? It's an environmental filter and it exchanges out the, it's sodium aluminum silicate typically. There's also some calcium in there and some, some forms like clinoptolite, clinoptolite is more sodium um, aluminum silicate and they exchange out for all these toxins. And then we, so people buy this stuff, grind it up, turn it into like sand, put it in suspensions and put it uh, you know, uh, in, in powders and they give it to you, but it's loaded with the heavy metals. They never cleaned it out. So what we sought out to do is we, we came off the team. We have a patent pending process of cleaning out all the bad guys out of these cages to the point, if you look at my data and I could bring it back up, that our raw material, everyone watching, our raw material has no, uh, no discoverable levels of heavy metal below analytical detection limits. So our raw material, not before we dilute it with our liposomal, you know, matrix, you know, or, you know, it's the carrying agent, if you will, the liposome, that's what pharmaceuticals use to bring the fats like the cross cell membrane. So we wrap it in a liposome. It's kind of like a little fat lipid bilayer, like a cell that allows things to pass in through the cells, into the gut, through the gut, into the bloodstream. So we really had to come up with something that was safe and effective for heavy metals. And this is where we landed. I can get into more of the science of it. And then we decided, okay, these toxins are all through your body. Can we break these cages down multiple cages when you buy this stuff it's like you could see it like a grain of sand and that has that stuff's not crossing your gut but can we break this stuff down and show it with science which we've done that the atomic weight the size 
of the zeolite particles are small enough to cross into those cells where those toxins are out and then even cross just the gut so it's in your bloodstream. So we have different sizes of these cages, little small ones, medium size and big ones and across that whole array so that we can pass this, this natural zeolite uh, clamptolite molecule into the body so that it can do what it's meant to do. And it's been a game changer for us in our protocols because it's so much safer than DMSA too, because DMSA is a strong, that's why they pulled it off the market, too many re re bad reports. So we came up with the Cadillac product, um, glass bottle, right, glass tincture, like no plastics, we're not polluting anybody. We liposomed it so it can cross cell membranes. We put some other binders in there that are very clean source, uh, no detectable heavy metals in, in our anything we do. We triple test everything, far exceeds CGMP standards, so that we bring something that's safe, simple, and effective to support our mission. And this is, you know, a passion project. After being in this for 15 years, we just developed this uh, about three years ago, and we have two patents that are pending on it. So we're super excited uh, to bring something that's, that everybody can do on a daily basis. And how do you take it? Um, the easiest way is half a dropper, start off half a dropper, you know, when you wake up in the morning and a half a dropper before bed and build up to a full dropper, you know, um, and this stuff. And again, there's all the questions. Is it demineralized? You know, there's not enough zeolite. You're not taking enough. It's like I did the math because math is what works. Um, it would, if assuming it would take um, all the calcium, it would just bind calcium, which it can't because it's actually exchanging. Um, the, the, the cleaning process actually puts calcium and sodium inside of these these cages. So it's going to exchange out and give you calcium and, and sodium. So it's not going to demineralize you at all. But if it did, the amount that's, that you're taking on a daily basis would be like 1%. Say it bound all calcium in your body and no heavy metals. It would be 1% of your RDA of all calcium. And that's if you took um, two droppers a day, right? So there is no demineralization. It's exchanging out toxic heavy metals for uh, light, light, um, light metals like sodium and, and, and calcium that get into your body, right? So this has been our passion project, something that's safe and effective that everybody can do to start moving that needle um, in their life. So that's, you can tell that I'm super excited about it. Um, it's, awesome. There's so much fun science into this, but again, um, I, I even confuse myself sometimes with the, the different, you know, five ring and 10 ring structures, and there's different size cages that uh, are gonna bind different types of toxins. There's lots of research that it can bind mold, a biotoxin has a positive charge as well. Same with glyphosate. Um, and again, I'm not going to overstep my bounds um, and say that I don't have any evidence. There is some literature that shows that, but I'm currently continuing to do research on our product, showing what it can, um, what it can do for you and how it's working. So um, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you. And I appreciate your passion and all of your science knowledge and, and stuff that's like way over my head, probably for some other people too. But yeah, absolutely. And, um, and everyone, there's a button below. So you can click right through on that to head over to, to Warren's site and, and get yours if you're interested. And, and are there any, any last insights, anything else that you want to talk about before we wrap up? No, my, 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 I guess the greatest gift that I, you know, uh, want to share with you today is that yeah, to give you guys hope, right? If you're faced with a health challenge like I was, um, if you're faced with a, even a psychological challenge, right? Know that there's hope and there's, there's people who want to help you, good people in this world that are going to come alongside of you and help show you the way. And um, from my personal experience through my challenges in my life, it's given me a compassion and hope. Um, because it, it, it works and it helps people. And that's why I'm here, is to give you hope and to show you that you're not broken, um, that you, you're not, you don't have to stay the way that you are. You can, you can fix um, yourself by taking, uh, let's quote uh, you know, like what my kids are saying you know, from Frozen 2, you know, do the next right thing. Right. Right? And, and if you continue to do the next right thing in your life and take steps and people that are trustworthy, like, like Andy and myself and the people you're gonna see on the summit, you take those next right things and listen to your gut, listen to your body. Um, there's a lot of wisdom in that and do the things that you know. Don't take my word for it. Listen to your body and say, you know what? That resonated with me. That toxicity thing, I know that. You know, I have this. I have that, right? I, I got these challenges. I've done the research. You're right. I, I'm so glad that you shared that. Or if it's a psychological piece, right? I'm just not thinking right. I'm judging people. I'm, I'm causing my own toxicity. Whatever it may be, do the next right thing change your life, you'll get there. And it takes time. It's not an overnight process. Have patience with yourself. Have patience with those around you. 
ask for forgiveness often and give forgiveness often as well. So that's, that's, that's my, my hope and message for you guys today more than anything else. Mm, beautiful. I love that you, you threw in forgiveness there. That's awesome. So powerful. <laughs> One of it our really favorite is. topics. So awesome. Thank you so much, Warren. This has been amazing. You, you're amazing. You have an amazing story and you do amazing work in the world. So I really appreciate your time. Uh, the honor again, as I started, the honor was mine. Thank you for sharing your family and, uh, and audience with me. It's my honor. Absolutely. And everyone watching and listening, thank you so much for being here, for loving yourself, for showing up for yourself today. And we'll see you again real soon. Take care, everybody.